Hi, in this video, I'm going to give you five quick tips to get started with the Oxy One sequencer. I won't be going into a detailed feature by feature review because I'm planning a series of videos covering this sequencer. So in today's video, we're just going to really get started, demystify a few of the features it has and show you some of the more powerful features that can really open up the possibilities for creating songs with it. OK, let's look at quick tip number one, and that's understanding the concepts that the Oxy One uses for sequencing. You access each sequencer by pressing on the buttons here, and they can be muted or in different modes. As you can see, the grid display changes to represent the mode the sequencer is in. So that's the first thing to get your head around when using the Oxy One. You're not just dealing with a four track sequencer, you're dealing with four individual sequencers, each of which can have multiple tracks. Sequencers can be configured to send MIDI, or they can be configured to send CV and gate information to your modular, or both. And a sequencer is up to 128 steps long, and you access the various pages by tapping here. You can also set the start and end by very quickly pressing the init and end button to adjust the end, and you see the screen here reflects the current values. You'll notice that each sequencer, you can have a scale selected. So here I just turn these knobs so I could be in say a different scale and I will go back to Dorian. I can adjust the root note of the sequencer. I can navigate up and down by just pressing the Y div button here and we can scroll up. This shows you the root note of the current sequencer. So we're currently on the, uh, when it goes to the bottom, it disappears and here comes the one up top and you can see how many semitones you're scrolling up and down. You're not changing the notes, you're just scrolling the grid. You can also adjust the play directions. You can randomize that and you can adjust the time division. So you can go slow, you can go fast onto triplets. If you want to move notes around, just press this button and off we go. Off the notes go, down they come and back around and they will loop around. So if you're recording and you don't quite get things into the right spot, easy enough to shift things around using these buttons. Let's start off with a simple monophonic sequencer. I have it on MIDI channel 11, which is going over here to the Digitone, we could do uh, adjust the scale here to put in minor. And because it's monophonic, you can have only one note on each step. Let's see what happens when we do a chord sequencer. So let's go into the keyboard mode. And here we see a chord keyboard. We have different chord inversions. C major with no inversion, open voicing, one inversion. And you can spread the notes out. Now, naturally, you can record this into the step sequencer, so you can be playing chords here and changing the chord modes without um, having to make any changes to the notes you're playing because it automatically computes all of that. What's a multi-track sequencer? Well, let's take a quick look at that. I have a sequencer four set up here in multi-track mode, and basically this turns it into your standard step drum sequencing. So we're going to use our Korg Volca sample here for just some simple drum sounds. So Let's just program in a four on the floor. And we have a chord also playing because we have one up here. And you can see I can change the chord around. Okay, not much different from something like the Deluge so far. Let's get into some fun sequencing now. For quick tip two, I am going to explain how to use randomization on the Oxy One to create very interesting melodies and rhythms. Now, there are two different approaches to randomization on the Oxy. One is called random perform mode, and random perform mode takes notes that you already have in your sequencer and randomizes how they're performed but it doesn't delete or change the notes. It takes what you've already programmed in. If you press the shift button and the perf random perform button, you're going to random generation mode. Random generation mode is different because it creates new notes. So it will destroy what's in the sequencer and overwrite it with a new randomly generated melody, which is controlled by these parameters. 
The combination of the random perform mode and the harmonizer mode, which I'll show you in a moment, is I think the killer feature on this sequencer. Let's start by looking at random performance mode. So I've just programmed in on step sequencer number one here, a simple chord progression played by the Digiton here on uh, track one. And on sequencer four here, I have a drum beat that I've programmed in. Let's look at how we can use random performance mode to change up our drum rhythms. And this is what I tend to use it for a lot. If I mute all of the other tracks here, and let's just solo track two. You can hear it's that kind of snare sound. Now let's use random performance to use the Euclidean rhythms to generate some new rhythmic element there. So I'll hit random perform. Now I want to select track two because my yellow indicator is here. So I'm going to go up to here. So now you see this row is now selected and it says random perform T2 up the top here. So now I know I'm on track two. These four parameters here control the randomness applied to the velocity, the gate length, whether or not a note will trigger and the re-trigger amount. So let's go and adjust, for example, the re-trigger. So there'll be a one in three chance of these re-triggering when these trigs are hit. You heard the re-trigger there. I could turn that up to 50% which is probably a bit much, but you get the idea. You can program in re-triggers now, so we have a little bit of variation there. So let's randomize the trigger amount by going down to track two again. I'm on random performance track two here. Track two is selected, and we are going to set the trigger to 50%, so only one in two times will the triggers fire, but there's still a 40% chance that they will re-trigger. Now you get a very different outcome. You can dial up the probability a note will trigger all the way back up to 100%. So now I've just gone over and I've turned off pressed um, random performance here, turned retrigger down to zero, and in random performance mode now I can dial in these six pulses. We could put more. You could rotate it by a number of steps, and you can invert it, which flips the order, flips the on-off steps. That's great for kind of bills and you're leaning up to something. You see there, I set on track three, the length to 11. So you don't obviously have to stick each drum track to be 16 steps long. You can have them as many steps as you want, which means you can have them moving in and out of phase with each other. Combining that with Euclidean rhythms, you're gonna get some very interesting melodies. See here how track three now is triggering only 11 steps, whereas the others are on 16. Now we've looked at random generation and performance for drum tracks. Now let's look at it for uh, sequencers. And I'm going to go over here to this mono sequencer, which is going to track two on the Digitum. Now, normally you would punch in notes and off we go, but we can actually use the random generator, and I've harmonized this up to sequencer one, we'll talk about that in a second, to actually create a whole new melody in here. Now, remember, in a mono sequencer, if I just press the randomize button, we start off with the random performance mode because we the sequencer assumes you've got notes in here and you want to adjust the performance to them. But we're going to generate notes, so we press shift and the dice button again, and we're into random generator mode. Now, these are the controls of the degree of randomness. You can randomize the scale. I tend to not randomize the scale because if you randomize the scale, things are going to jump wildly out of tune, which might be what you want, but in this case, I don't. You can humanize it, which kind of slides the notes around a little bit as if a, a, a human player was playing them. I keep that quite small. This is the degree of randomness generated, and this is the density of notes. The higher, the more notes programmed in. Punch the buttons and a melody pattern is plugged in. Punch it again, another one, and another one. What if you liked one and you lost it? Don't worry, just hit undo, and you can go back through 10 different patterns, and you can redo them. This is a fantastic performance feature that I use when playing. Let's take a listen. Now I go back.
I've already showed you in the previous uh, quick tip that if I have chords here on sequencer one and I have sequencer two harmonized to it, all of these random melodies will stay in tune with that sequencer. But what if I change the chords being played on sequencer one? What happens to these melodies? Do they stay the same or do they shift around? So here is the here are the chords that we programmed in in sequencer one that we were listening to now. I'm just going to delete them using the uh, clear button here. Now I'll put sequencer one, the chord sequencer, into keyboard mode. So I can play chords manually. The lovely thing about the Oxy One is I can be playing these chords manually and sequencer two here, which remember is our uh, randomly generated melody, will follow along. So let's have a go. You see there? Did you hear how Sequencer 2 changed the key and the chord to stay in tune with Sequencer 1? And so what you're able to do now is program in different chord progressions and save them. And then your sequencers that are harmonized to those chords will change what are being played. The melody will roughly sound the same, but the notes will shift up and down the scale. Such a powerful feature for creating performances, builds and drops, verses and choruses. For the fourth quick tip, I'm going to show you patterns and how you can use them to build performances and jump between parts of your performance. At first, I was confused by the concept of patterns and songs. In most of the sequencers I've had, like the Deluge, for example, I'm used to saving a song and a song is composed of various tracks or clips or patterns. The Oxy One does it slightly differently. You can save the patterns which are tied to each sequencer independently of the overall song. So if you had a drum groove you liked, or a melody you liked, you could reuse it over and over. So let's look at how we can save, say, some different random melodies we've created in Sequencer 2. So like before, we have our chord progression in Sequencer 1, and I have a few of those generated, and we have our melody here in Sequencer 2. We really like this, we want to save this. First of all, if you just want to save your project real quick, just press Shift and Save. Project to save, that snapshot everything into quick save, well-recommended feature. Hit the save button here. Now, what are we looking at? We have four rows, each of which corresponds to patterns in each of the four sequencers, sequencer one through four. Each of these paths corresponds to a saved pattern. So if I want to save a pattern that we just had here on sequencer two that we just programmed in, I double tap that pad, and now I have saved that pattern onto sequencer two. Now, say I generated another random melody on sequencer two using the uh, random generator. So we went boink, and we have another uh, random melody here. Say I like this and I wanted to save it. I would go over to here into save mode. I would double tap there, and now I've saved that into slot two. So here's that melody. Of course, if we want to load them up, the same principle applies. You press the load button, and now I just tap there, and I've loaded pattern one into sequencer two. And now I've loaded pattern two into sequencer two. So say, for example, I went into sequencer one, which is remember our chord sequencer, and I'm going to clear this out and we're going to record in, we're going to record in this chord sequence. So there we've recorded in a different chord sequence on sequencer one, and I'd like to change, save that here, maybe into slot five. So now I've saved that there to slot five. Go back into load mode. Loading a different chord progression. I found that using the load view here for patterns is a great way to actually just build up a song and then perform it by just loading up different patterns and you can just stay in this mode and perform your whole song. So for the final tip in today's video, I'm going to explain stochastic mode. Now stochastic mode is one of the sequencer modes and I've got a sequencer three here in stochastic mode. Uh, you just change it as before by setting it to stochastic. Now, sequencer three is going to play 
that sound there on the uh, Digitum. When you put your sequencer into stochastic mode, it looks very different because this is not a step sequencer anymore. Each of the columns here represents the probability that that note from the scale you've selected will be played. If you put it all the way up the top, it's 100%. The note would be played every time through. Down the bottom is zero. That's, you know, 50%. Adjust the degree of randomization applied to the notes using this column. So you see here the pitch is going to be randomized, in this case, by around 57%. And this column here can adjusts the degree of randomization applied to the rhythm of the notes. These two columns control the degree to which the notes jump up and down the scale. Uh, so this will go up and down two octaves, one octave, and this will stay within the octave, down an octave, down two octaves, stay within the octave. Let's just set it to jump up an octave. This adjusts the division, the timing division of the notes. For what we're going to do today, I won't turn it on. So I'm just going to set this here. Now remember, uh, sequencer three is harmonized back to sequencer one. So our chords are still going to control the scale and the notes being generated here as those chords change. These random notes will change along with them. So let's just uh, look at what happens to the notes being generated here when we change, of course, the notes being played in the chord on sequencer one, because sequencer three is harmonized to sequencer one. You see how they changed? These five tips should be enough to get you started with the Oxy One, just exploring and playing it with your synths. So in future videos, I'm gonna dive into some of these more complex topics like the arranger mode, LFOs, and how to interface it to your modular setup as well. Don't forget, if you have questions for me or comments or things you'd like me to cover in videos on the Oxy One or indeed any of my videos, please do leave a comment down below. I always love reading them. I love responding to them. It's great to hear from you. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part.